Hello and welcome to another episode of Talking Faith, and the weekly devotional where we spend a little bit of time reflecting over scripture, reflecting over what God has been saying to me with my own personal devotions, so we can grow as a community of God and continue to seek to strive after him as we look through his word and seek to grow from understanding what that means for us today. And this week we're going to be continuing through the book In His Image, looking at the third attribute of God that Jen Wicklin brings out, and that is the attribute of His goodness. We've seen His holiness, His loving nature, and we want to reflect on His goodness today. Uh, as I urge you every week, I urge you to get a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and just relax with me as we continue talking faith together. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light was good. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. But on a stand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Mm. So I'm about to say something that might disappoint some of you, to be perfectly honest. Something that I would reveal about myself, but I think some people would suggest that I don't. Uh, I absolutely love listening to Christmas music, and in fact, I don't limit myself to listening to it around Christmas. I might find myself from time to time humming a little tune and realising this is a Christmas tune. In particular, I love listening to Michael Bublé. And I know many people say you need to only listen to Christmas music between uh, the after Halloween and just about New Year's time. But I like to listen to him no matter what time of year it is. And when I'm listening to his playlist, sometimes Christmas music comes on. And while I was preparing for this devotion, I was doing that very thing. I was listening to Michael Bublé and suddenly a song came on Maybe very joyful. Santa Claus is coming to town. Not exactly the best time of year to be listening to it, you know, we're not even anywhere near it. But at the same time, I sort of caught myself reflecting over the words and there was a particular line that stood out to me, particularly as I was thinking of the goodness of God. And it's, you know, you, uh, Santa Claus is watching if you're naughty or nice, so be good for goodness sake. Something along that, the lines of that. But the, the notion is that Santa Claus is watching, so you need to be good for the sake of goodness sake, so that you can you know, get the present that you're looking for. That's the, that's the thing. You're kind of faking goodness, if I'm being perfectly honest, in that line. And I don't like that line of that song, because it almost is like a fake goodness. Pretend so that you get given something good. But I think actually as Christians, we can draw something from this. Because I think we're not called to be good for the sake of goodness. We're called to be good because God is good. The attribute of God's goodness comes out instantly in scripture. Some areas of his uh, character take a while to shine through but his goodness is almost instant it is instantly apparent because in genesis chapter one we see as he creates the world again and again he calls it good he creates one part and he says it is good he creates another it is good until he has created it all and he says it is very good his creation is a reflection of his very goodness he creates goodness in this world and that can be seen through nature itself as we think on things like the Grand Canyon, such a beautiful uh, wonder of creation that is just absolutely mesmerizing, stunning, glorious, and good. Another area is just the scenes we see when we even walk through Scotland. I remember saying uh, in a preach not too long ago that I was up at Glencoe with some friends and I saw a sunrise or a sunset even over the mountains and it was absolutely stunning. The goodness of God's glory was on display for all to see. And I think as well as in creation, his goodness is made apparent through us. We have an opportunity to reflect the goodness of God. But how do we do that? Well, I think we do that through reflecting on the greatest sign of goodness ever given, the greatest gift ever given. Jesus died 2000 years ago and he rose again for us. And in that is the greatest gift. The gospels say it's good news. Good news for all people because we couldn't meet the mark, but Jesus could. 
And he dealt with the, the penalty of sin that came in at Genesis 3, the, the consequence of sin, and he overcame it. And that is good news. And we can share that by telling others of God, by reflecting on who he is, telling it in the, in the gospel story so that others can see not our goodness, goodness, but the goodness of God. Then as well as that, we are called, because God is good, to show his goodness for all to see. On Sunday, uh, Alan was reflecting on the Good Samaritan and we were seeing an enemy of the character in the story coming and showing goodness to him by healing his wounds, by uh, taking him to an inn so he can rest and recover. He showed the goodness of God despite not even having a relationship with God necessarily. And there was a challenge in that for us to show goodness to all people, no matter how different we are, because the challenge in the Good Samaritan is even those considered our enemy, we have to be good neighbours too. So God calls us to be good to them, not because we are good, but because he is good. He calls us to do it because our image will reflect the goodness of God just in the same way as we tell his good news story. So let me urge you over the next week, as you're thinking about the goodness of God, think about how you can best be good in the workplace that you're in or in the relationships that you're in, the place that you're in right now. How can you, be, be, how can you best be a good brother, a good sister? How can you best be a good parent, a good child? How might you best be a good co-worker, a good employer, employee? The list goes on. How might you shine the glory of God through your goodness to all others around? And a caution to this tale is sharing the goodness of God, well, sometimes it can actually hurt. It can cost us something. For the Good Samaritan that Alan sort of uh, talked about on Sunday, you see that it cost him, well, financially alone just to care for this person and then also the time it took him to get him to a safe place to make sure he was okay. And showing goodness, it costs us something. It may cost us friendships, it may cost us, uh, it may cost us relationships, but at the end of the day, we are called to be good as God is good. And through doing so, we shine a light for all people to see the goodness of God. No matter the cost it has on us, God paid the ultimate cost on the cross. So we, in light of that, should be more than happy to pay such a smaller fee compared to him. So I urge you in your day-to-day -day life, how might you best be good to those around you? There's many different ways you could do it, and that's up to your relationship with God. How might you best seek to shine the glory of God through your goodness?